could go for 12 and 18 hours at a time actually doing surveillance yeah. over what was happening at, 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 at below us. And we, we, served, we went to the Red Sea mm -hmm. in several of those areas to see, you know, what you had all kinds of electronic means to look at what was going on. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were sending this out to other people, to ships below us, etc. Mm -hmm. It's the only, it was one of the, one of the three or four times we actually got shot at. Um, and you were still in your KC-1? Well, oh yeah. We had no defense, no fighters, no bombers, no around us, and we ran across some MiGs at the time. And um, fortunately for us, there was a lot of cloud cover. <laughs> we were going down in flames. But, uh, yeah, but you know, that's, that's wartime. I think that, that's the key with this whole thing. That's wartime. Yeah. It's, it's, it's dire myth. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what was it like being in the air for 18, 12, 18 hours? Was well, it, did you maybe adjust to that? Or? Yeah, you got up, you moved around, you were given lunches, uh, meals, um, you had a lot to drink. Of course, the KC 130s bars had basic bathrooms, mm -hmm. not unlike the airplanes in, the, in mm -hmm. Korea in World War II. We had some amenities that were up for that long. Mm -hmm. So, um, we, yeah, we, had, we could get up and move around. Um, as a navigator, you could take a break, but you could never be gone for longer than half an hour at a time. Okay. You were flying patterns, which were essentially static patterns, mm -hmm. but they still need you in case the pattern, and you move those patterns, had to move up and down mm -hmm. where you were going. Mm -hmm. So we spent, and then also, um, we went into Vietnam um, to pick up, um, at one time, uh, if, I'm not sure everyone recalls it, but there was a B-59 that was went down the end of the runway, um, and it was destroyed. The only person that lived in that B-52 was the tail gunner. We actually went up and went in. We were the airplane that went in to pick up the parts and the, and the survivors and take them back to where they were going. So, so we did actually fly in Vietnam, um, and it was a very positive. Wartime is never positive, but it was. But as far as being a professional, it was a very good time in my life. I was actually able to become a very a professional. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got back to the and then like I was four months, and then we were to come back to the states and then go back and come back and go back. Mm -hmm. And I got back to the states, and um, they had a lot of a lot of personal challenges at the time, and the Air Force was not very flexible on what was going on, and so I did take an early out at the you know, little over three years, almost four years, mm -hmm. and was given the opportunity, and I left. Um, my, my Air Force experience was it, overall very positive, and it set me up, I think, for a disciplinary, a, a life that I could live with discipline but still be relaxed. Mm -hmm. What I learned in the service was I went in as a career officer and realized after about two years it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my personality, and I wasn't a fit. And and so when the opportunity came along to leave earlier, a year earlier than I could, I took it. Um, I also learned that that war is hell, but sometimes it, it needs to be fought. Um, we'll never be. Unfortunately, while we're all human beings, I don't think the day will ever come that we won't have to have some kind of unfortunately military combat. It's just the way life is. And the end. Um, the only, the only negative thing I have, well, there's several other things, but the one ne negative thing that I really feel strongly about is I, I made, after three years, after coming out, it took me three years to really get on my feet, understand who I was again, because th th there had been a lot of brutality around me during the war. And it was... I really didn't appreciate the way we were treated after we left the service. Mm -hmm. Some people were treated much better than others. Some people recovered much better. But I thought this country at the time was less tolerant mm -hmm. of warriors, per se, mm -hmm. than ever been. Mm -hmm. And other than feeling sympathetic initially about Agent Orange, they didn't feel sympathetic about the military at the time at all. Mm -hmm. The thing that I really appreciate now is I think we have a different attitude towards our soldiers. Mm -hmm. And I think that grew out of the... We didn't appreciate what the, what the 
the military people that left World War II and, and Korea mm -hmm. came out with. I mean, we see things differently now as far as some of the impacts of war on them mm -hmm. than we did then. I think we just expected people when they came out of, the, uh, out of Korea and, mm -hmm. and World War II to say, suck it up, you just have to make a transition and go. Mm -hmm. Vietnam was a little bit of that, but we were in, but we were in internal turmoil at the time in the country. And less, even less sympathetic. And now I see that the way we treat ourselves is much better. We, we understand that conflict um, leaves an impression on people to a point where they, in some time, in, in some cases, may have to have some. Um, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, downtime. Oh. They need mm -hmm. psychologically mm -hmm. to figure out who they are and what they are and what they've been through. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that up till the, up till the uh, wars in 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 um, uh, well, the conflicts in the Middle East we really considered that a, a big deal. Okay. Um, would I go back in the service? You bet. Would I want to as a career? No. I'd go back in the service if. The country was in danger, but, I, but there was no need for me to do that, and I'm a little old for that now anyway. All right, all right, all right. Um, let me just ask a couple questions, sort of fill in a couple. Sure. Um, so when you, when you left, um, I guess, California, you headed to Vietnam. Um, no, I, no, I left California, went to Washington, and from Washington, I went to South Dakota. From South Dakota, I went to. Okay. Okay, you know. uh, okay, how did you get to Vietnam? It was, it was on your... your well, I was on they flew us over. Okay. Through, so through Alaska. Okay. Through so Japan. You, you didn't have to navigate this trip. No, no, no. no. Okay. Coming home like that. Okay. So once you uh, left, you were headed to Vietnam, did you go straight to Thailand? Yes. Initially? Mm -hmm. Okay, you were based there. Yeah. They, they had a place in Southern Thailand. Was Saigon or something? Yeah, Saigon. Okay, but that wasn't. You know. Well, I spent some time there too. <laughs> we we moved around a couple of places. Actually, there was another place called Karak. Yeah, yeah, I'll take Karak. Yeah. And my my brother, who went to service, followed me in the service about two years later, mm -hmm. uh, was an intelligence officer. He spent a lot of time in Karak. Yeah. yeah. Um, now we we we're, we're there in Thailand. What was the the most diff difficult part of let's say navigating a uh, 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 KC-135? Uh, the most challenging part. Can you throw it back on? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think the most challenging part was to make sure you knew where because you flew in formations and the formations were made up of three or four tankers, and each tanker was responsible for four to five fighters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because those fighters would rotate in to refuel, go out, and then come back. Mm -hmm. So the most, you had to keep the entire formation. If you were a lead airplane, you had to keep the entire formation going in the right direction and still make sure that the airplanes were flying at the proper speed and at the proper distance so the fighters could be refueled. Mm -hmm. Or bombers, whichever you were feeling. Now that's another thing I forgot to mention is that we also did a lot of a lot of work over the uh, the China China Sea because we were feeling bombers over that area when they were going into uh, northern mm -hmm. Vietnam. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. okay. right. When you, you indicated that that you were actually shot at by some MiGs, mm -hmm. okay. we also had missiles yeah. shot at us. We also had missiles were pointed from the ground. Believe it or not, oh, 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 sir, 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 I, that was one we thought we all struggled with because we were at you know when you're doing reconnaissance, you're not at low levels, you're at high levels, and we had no. I mean, it wasn't logical they couldn't reach us in most cases, mm -hmm. but they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and how long had you been in the service? I mean, how long had you been uh, in theater and when that actually happened? About three weeks. About three weeks? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So I guess that was, okay. Um, now, you indicated that you were headed be back and you were headed back to uh, the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, where were you then when you... You went back to Ellsworth. Ellsworth. Which is in South Dakota. Okay, back to South Dakota. That's actually where it's discharged from, too. Okay, you were discharged yeah. from South Dakota. Okay. Um, of the... Entire experience over overseas. I know you mentioned some things, some things about it, and some things about listed brutality yeah. and those kind of things. What, 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 what type of was it? The brutality well, of, of the war? Yeah, of, that was it. For instance, and, and, and I'm sure that, and I'm sure we didn't have it as bad as the people that were on the ground. Okay. That's the one thing I will say that I think that 
in a sense, we had an easier when we 